He's risen. Say, I don't know about you, but in my life, he's risen. Say, something special is about to happen. Because he's risen. So, ladies and gentlemen, as we are celebrating the death, the burial, the resurrection, and the ascension of Yeshua, let me remind you that Jesus is our Lord and Savior. He is your Lord. He is your Savior. The term Lord, it means your master. He is our master. When we say Lord God, we are saying master, Adonai, my master. He is our Lord. He is our Savior. No one can save you. No church can save you. No leader can save you. It's only one man with that assignment to save humankind. And that man is Jesus Christ. And you need to receive life because he has already paid a price for you in the name of Jesus Christ. There is something that is special when you begin to understand and to realize that Jesus Christ, he did everything, all the suffering, six hours of insults, six hours of pain. It was meant for you. He was beaten. He was slandered. He was spit on. And all these things, he was doing it for you so that you live a fullness of life. And I decree and declare that you are now entering into a season where you experience the fullness of life. Jesus Christ came so that we might have life and have it more abundantly. Yes, I know that the enemy comes to kill, steal, and destroy. But I'm more concerned about what God did for us, what he did through his son Jesus Christ that we need to have abundant life and I need you to live that abundant life and I need to make a statement and you need to make up your mind that Jesus Christ didn't die in vain for you. He did that for you and you might as well make sure that you superimpose it in your life, that you need to realize it in your life. You need to see his hand in your life. You need to see his hand in your children. You need to see his hand in your family. You need to see his hand in your marriage. You need to see his hand in everything that you do because he didn't just do that for just for the sake of doing it. He was doing it for you and he was making it better for you. So you need to embrace the spirit of life right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Some of us is so sad that we live like he didn't die for us. We live like there's no God but you are going to be quickened right now in your spirit and you realize that no, I cannot accept this. I cannot take this because Jesus Christ paid a price. Jesus Christ did it for me and you change your situation in the mighty name of Jesus. I declare right now that you are not going to through the suffering that you have been going through because Jesus Christ has already paid a full price in the name of Jesus Christ. Your death they were fully paid. The sentence was fully saved. You should not save it. It is called double jeopardy. If you are to save the term again, it is not right in the realm of the spirit. So you don't need to save anything. You don't need to pay any debt because he, when he said it is finished. Indeed, everything was finished on that cross in the mighty name of Jesus. Say, in my life it is finished. Say like you are somebody who is quickened in the spirit. I thought you were saying uh, there's revitalization. Say, it is finished in my life. My debt has been fully paid for. The sentence has been saved fully in my life in the name of Jesus. Come on, appreciate what Jesus Christ did. In the mighty name of Jesus. He's not just our savior. He's also our high priest. According to the order of Melchizedek. You know everything has to do with order. And there are orders that are superior than other orders. But this order of Melchizedek. It is a supreme order. It is above every other order. Even in the dark world. There is Masonic order. There are things that are there. But when we come to Christ. That's where everything is finished in the name of Jesus Christ. So he is our high priest according to this order, the order of Melchizedek. Hallelujah. Which is a higher form of order. It is the supreme order in the name of Jesus Christ. So in this priesthood, he lives to make intercession for us as our high priest. In the old days before Christ we, we needed a human being, someone who would go in there, in the Holy of Holies, standing in the gap for us. But once this man 
Once Yeshua came and appeared on the scene, we don't need any man to do anything with our sins or to go before us and to stand on our behalf. Christ did it for us. Christ did it for you. He's your high priest. He's in making intercession. He lives. I believe it's the book of Hebrews. He says he lives to make intercession. That's what he lives for. So even right now, you might be going through a situation, but he's making intercession right now. And that, that is good news. That's why we are saying this is good news. This is glad tidings because there is someone who is standing in the gap for me, making intercession for me. There are enemies that are against me, the people that are working against me, but I don't need to worry because the high priest himself is making intercession for me even right now. So it doesn't matter what the enemy is trying to do. It matters what Christ is saying. It matters what Christ is doing right now. And I've got news for you that right now is making intercession for you. Your are marriage, it will work out in the name of Jesus. Your health shall be restored in the mighty name of Jesus. Your business shall thrive. Why? He's making intercession. Christ is for you. He's not against you. He's for you. If he's for you, then it means your situation is going to turn around. Hallelujah. So this Christ is the Passover lamb. That's why we are now celebrating Passover. And I painted a picture of that, what it is. And this is what the Bible records. It says, the next day, John saw Jesus coming toward him and said, Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. John 1, 29. It says, Behold, this is the one who takes away the sin of the world. So this one is the one who takes away our sins. So you don't need to live in sin and bondage because of Yeshua, because of Jesus Christ. Yeshua, once again, I want to remind you because this is the message of the cross. It's forgiveness, but it's also love. It's a statement that he paid your death in full on that cross. Hallelujah. Your sentence is fully served. You don't need to be manipulated by the dark world and making you suffer for certain things. The sentence was fully served. You don't have to be punished in any way. He took our place. This is what scripture says. For he made him, him meaning Jesus, who knew no sin to be seen for us, that we might become the righteousness of God. In him, 2 Corinthians 5, 21. This is the reason. He did that so that you and I, we can become the righteousness of God. And we know through scripture, it says that our own righteousness, some people, they consider that, you know what, I pay tithes, you know, I'm a giver. Some people, they consider that, you know, they are good people. For that reason, they say, now, that's what's, what makes me righteous. No, 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 brother. The righteousness, that is true righteousness, it is of God. It is given unto us. It is a free gift unto us. That's why the Bible says our own righteousness is like filthy rags. It's nothing before him. So our righteousness is about what he did for us. It's about the workings of God in our lives. It's not what you are doing. It's not what you are accomplishing. You cannot do things to become righteous, but although you can do righteous things as you are a righteous man. Can you see the difference? I'm doing right because I'm already righteous. I'm not doing something right to become righteous. I, sh I wish I had a few people who'd understand what I'm talking about. It's not me coming to church that makes me right. I'm already the righteous coming to church, coming to save the Lord. It's not my waking. It's not my preaching. It's not my ushering. It's not whatever I'm doing. It's because of what Jesus Christ did on the cross that has made me the righteousness of God. I want you to affirm yourself. Say, I am the righteousness of God. This is good preaching. This is doctrine that I'm giving you. Hallelujah. Say, I'm righteous because he made me righteous. So scripture brings us to a revelation says, for by grace you are saved through faith. And this is a gift from God. It's not your own doing. It's a gift from God. You are the righteousness of God by faith. It's nothing to do with your works. Say nothing to do with your works. Here's why I'm teaching you this. 
Why then, when you sin, you begin to do the works? We righteous people, we have been just declared righteous. There was nothing that we were doing to become righteous. He just paid the price and we are declared righteous. Now what happens is when we sin, then we begin to do righteous things. To go back to the places that he has already given to us for free. Quit doing that. I said quit doing that. It's just saying, Lord, I repent. And you turn around. He forgives you and you continue to walk in the walk in the mighty name of Jesus. Let's lift up these burdens that we place upon people. Oh, you need seven days. You need this. You need that. No. The moment somebody says, I'm sorry, Lord, they are already restored. And you need to have confidence that you are restored as a child of God. This is why the enemy uses and takes advantage of us because he uses sin to make us cowards. That we stop doing certain things that we were doing when we're working with God, and now because we have sinned against him, we stop doing certain things, wanting to become righteous, and it's self-manufactured this time, and, but you never got it that way. So you have to understand that you don't need to do all that way. Jesus Christ has already paid the price. And this is not to condone sin, this is not to justify sin, but just to know your position in the Lord, and stand in your position. Do not allow the enemy to intimidate you, and to make you feel miserable, become remorseful. No. You need to understand who you are in Christ. Hallelujah. So on this special day, let's examine this powerful priesthood. Because we are talking about priesthood today. The eternal priesthood of our Messiah. The priesthood of Melchizedek. This is the priesthood of Jesus as I'm talking about this subject, let me remind you that you are a king and a priest unto God, according to the book of Revelation, chapter 1. And I've been laboring on that. So, some of you, you think that maybe it's a subject that I'm saying, it's me. No, it's you. You are a priest and a king according to that word in Revelation. Or in the New Testament, you are a king and a priest unto God. That's why the Bible brings us to a revelation that we are a royal priesthood. So there is priesthood in our lives. There is something to do with priesthood in you. Say, I'm a priest. Hallelujah. So I want you to know that you are a royal priesthood before God. So there is priesthood in you. And you need to activate that or to realize that you are a priest unto God. Hallelujah. So... You are a priest, some of you, to your family. Amen? You are a priest. You have a jurisdiction over your family if you are a priest in your family. And some of you, you are a priest or your priesthood is actually been extended. To some here, it's extended over a community. That you begin to have a jurisdiction over a community. That God will use you to serve in that community, to serve in that area. Some, it's a city that there is authority, governmental authority that comes upon you over a city that you can speak and you can serve that city on behalf of Christ, on behalf of God himself. Priesthood is about saving. It's not about a title that to say, you know what, I'm a powerful person. It's about saving. And there's a jurisdiction. There's something that you are given, an authority that you are granted. And you need to know it. Some, there is a nation that you are given. To some, it's a region that you become a principality over a region. And what you say, what you do, it changes a region because of that priesthood. So I can safely say that each and every one of us here, there is a jurisdiction that God has given unto you, that you exercise the governmental authority of our Lord Jesus Christ. And it's time that we begin to exercise that governmental authority wherever we are. To you who are called into regions, it's time that you rise up and begin to walk boldly and cause territorial spirits to be silenced as you arise. You need to know who you are. You need to know the God that you carry. You need to know the authority that you have been given as a child of God. That's why Jesus Christ will say to them, where is your faith that you have allowed this situation to go like this? In other words, exercise your 
authority. I've given you authority. And he went to Moses. Moses said to him, why are you crying to me? Why are you stopping the people of God from moving forward? Just move forward. You have authority. You have, uh, you have grace. You have everything that you need. I've already granted unto you. Some of you are crying right now. God is saying the same thing. Why are you crying to me? Move. Why are you crying to me? Do that assignment. Why are you crying to me? Execute that thing that God has given unto you. God has, God has already blessed you. You, ev you have been blessed with everything. We've been blessed with all spiritual blessings in the Shamaim, in the heavenly places. We have this blessing. Hallelujah. Say, I am blessed already. Glory be to God. So, let's talk about this priesthood. And I want you to know that there is a priesthood which can turn around your story. It's a priesthood that announces to a buried woman about this time next year, you shall embrace a son. That's a priesthood. And somebody exercised his authority and said, you know what? I know who I am. I know the call of God, of God upon my life and stood and face to face with that barrenness and with that woman and declared that you shall hold your baby by this time next year. You shall have a baby. I decree and declare some of you by this time next year, something is going to take place in the mighty name of Jesus. The barrenness is broken in the name of Jesus Christ. The limitation is broken. Why? Because there is a priesthood that is already released right now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. How about a priesthood that cancels a long period of famine and announces a time of supernatural provision by declaring the word of God saying hear the word of the Lord that says the Lord tomorrow about this time a say of of flour shall be sold for a shekel and two cents of barley for a shekel at the gate of Samaria. I think we have seen so much nations going through tribulations and things and suffering. Economy is crashing but there shall be a priesthood that will arise in the name of Jesus Christ in the order of Melchizedek and speak even to an economy of a nation and begin to declare that by this time tomorrow something should take place in the mighty name of Jesus. Yes, there is a priesthood who says by this time next year but there's a priesthood that also says by this time tomorrow because you don't need to wait for a year you need to, something to happen now in our nation we need God now in our situation we need God now then there should be a priesthood that will arise in the order of Melchizedek and begin to announce that there's a change there's a shift that shall come tomorrow I declare by tomorrow your situation shall turn around in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, it is being turned around in the mighty name of Jesus. Say there is a priesthood. Ladies and gentlemen, there is a priesthood that tells someone who was always mocked by her rival year in and year out and that priesthood rises in the midst of the mockery, in the midst of the opposition, and tells Hannah, go in peace and the God of Israel grant your petition which you have asked of him. I decree and declare some of you, you are going to encounter certain priesthood that will realize that you have been mocked, you have been looked down upon, you have been ridiculed, you have been going through onslaughts of the enemy, and that priesthood will begin to say to you, Go in the strength of God, the God of Israel. May he do it according to that promise, according to that which he has spoken unto you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And I know that there are people that I'm speaking to, it might not be here, but let me preach with you who are watching over there that you have got a word, you have got something in you in the name of Jesus Christ. And I want to announce to you that go in peace in the name of Jesus. Whatever your God has promised you, it shall come to pass in the mighty in the name of Jesus Christ. Some of you, you were barren, you were mocked, and you were seeing other people having their children, but I decree and declare that in this season, it's your turn now. God has remembered you too in the name of Jesus Christ. You shall have your pregnancy, you shall conceive in your womb supernaturally in the name of Jesus. Days of celebrating other people's testimonies are coming to an end in your life. You too, you are going to testify. You too, you are going to demonstrate that in 
indeed the Lord God, the God of the armies of Israel. He lives in my life. He's, he arose and he's living in my life and I've got a testimony that that which was impossible in my life, it is now possible. Look, I'm pregnant right now. Look, I've got a baby right now. Look, something has happened right now and you are going to tell your penina that this is my baby. This is my child in the name of Jesus Christ. It's time to celebrate your miracle. I don't know who I'm talking to. I don't know who I'm preaching to, but I'm here to declare that there is a priesthood that will transition you from a place of being mocked to a place of also celebrating, to a place of also giving a testimony. You shall testify. I say you shall testify. You shall testify of the goodness of the Lord, of the mercy of the Lord in the mighty name of Jesus. Come on, give him a clap offering and thank God for that priesthood. Go in peace. And the God of Israel grant your petition which you have asked of him. There is a priesthood, ladies and gentlemen, that parts the Red Sea and it causes people to move forward in the midst of obstacles. I don't know what has been stopping you, but there is a priesthood that will make you realize that I'm face to face right now with the Red Sea and I don't know the way, I don't know how to maneuver here, but I'm here to declare that there is a priesthood that specializes in that area. It's a priesthood of a way maker. Your God is a way maker. He makes a way where there is no way. He passed the Red Sea. He passed the Red Sea in the name of Jesus and I declare that as we are celebrating Celebrating the resurrection power, may situations that were standing in your way, may they be pushed aside. May they be pushed aside this way, that way, so that you prevail in Jesus' mighty name. For the assignment that you have, he's making a way, he's making a way, he's making a way in Jesus' mighty name. Come on, celebrate it. That is making a way. Obstacles are removed right now. There's a priesthood that specializes in moving obstacles. You need this priesthood that tells you, do not be afraid. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will accomplish for you today. For the Egyptians whom you see today, you shall see again no more. I say to you, the Egyptians that you see today, you shall see no more because there's a Red Sea to consume. There's a Red Sea to overshadow and overflow and overflood these situations in the name of Jesus Christ. Don't you understand that the power of the cross, it is to allow certain things not to go across. It is not to allow certain things to continue. I decree and declare that as you are celebrating the resurrection of the Son of God, certain things are not going to cross to the other side. Sickness shall remain here. Poverty shall remain here. In the name of Jesus, confusion shall remain here. Stagnation shall remain here. Being mocked shall remain in here. Being troubled shall remain in here. But inside of here, there shall be things that will celebrate, will begin to walk on water in the name of Jesus. I decree and declare that you are about to be seen walking where there was a sea. You shall be seen walking there. Why? Because there is a breakthrough that is coming. Sit down, sit down, sit down. There is a breakthrough that is coming. So I'm just announcing that there is a priesthood that will cause your enemies that you see them perish in the Red Sea. Hallelujah. Say so there is a priesthood. I say there is a priesthood. Say to your neighbor, I, I'm saying there is a priesthood working in me, in my life. How about business? Your business. It's amazing that some of the things that we go through as business people, it requires a priesthood. Your nation, your business, your family, it needs a priesthood that boldly declares, I hear the sound of rain, yet the sky is blue with no sign of rain, absolutely. But by the spirit, the priesthood senses that there is a sound of rain. 
Why? Because they are in tune with God. They are constantly in touch with God. So they can come to a nation. They can come to a people. They can come to a business and begin to declare that which you are not seeing yourself. That which is not yet visible, but it's still there. It is there. It might not be visible, but it's there. Because it's not all that we see that is there. There are things that are invisible, but they are there. And this priesthood would appear in your business, would appear in your nation, would appear in your city and announces to a city that there is a sound of rain that I hear. I decree and declare that this year I hear the sound of rain in your business in the mighty name of Jesus. Your business might be in red. Your business might be going through challenges and trials in the name of Jesus. But there is a priesthood that is about to be awakened in the name of Jesus. And it touches, it is in touch with heaven and it brings heaven here on earth. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done here on earth as it is in heaven and we announce that which is happening in heaven in the mighty name of Jesus. I decree it is well with your family. I hear the sound of rain. It is well with your business. It is well with your ministry. It is well with your finances. There is a priesthood at work right now. Come on, give him a clap offering and thank God that there is a priesthood at work. This nation, we have gone through challenges. This is the only nation that has gone through a certain level of inflation and there was never a civil war. There is a priesthood in the nation. Our fathers, I tell you, they are people of prayer. We might not appreciate them, but they are causing the nation to stand. They are causing things to be in order. There are people somewhere, there are women somewhere in a village that you despise, you laugh at, but their prayers are causing the nation to stand. They are causing things to happen. It's not a man maybe in a suit. It's not a man who is finely dressed, but it's a woman somewhere. It's, a, it's an old man somewhere who cries out and heavens open in in the name of Jesus Christ. And some of you, it's not the education. Your father was never at Harvard, but it's you. It's, it is you who is benefiting because there is a priesthood in your family. Your father was never even a graduate, but look at the way that he paved the way for you. That he stood in the name of Jesus Christ. That the power of poverty was broken and you are elevated and you are now known and you are doing stuff. Why? There was a priesthood and you need to remember and appreciate your fathers, your parents because they paved a way for you in the name of Jesus Christ. There is a priesthood, ladies and gentlemen. There is a priesthood, ladies and gentlemen. There is a priesthood that is causing you to stand. You might despise that woman because she's old. You might despise that man, your pastor, because he's not a graduate like you. But he is used of God. And your marriage is still intact. Remember one of the persons that we dedicated said, you know what, I thank God. I was about to go through a divorce and I came to your office and you spoke some words and my marriage is now changed. There is a priesthood in the name of Jesus. There is a priesthood. There is a priesthood. And now he's taking the priesthood because of the ordination in his own family now. Hallelujah. Not only his family but also in the nation. He's now taking his place as a marketplace leader in our nation. There is a priesthood. There's a priesthood. The divorce was intercepted because there was a purpose. It was not just get to get you excited. Hallelujah. Say there's a priesthood. Mm. There's a priesthood. Glory be to God. So we thank God for those who have prayed for this nation. Intercessors that will not know. In heaven it is going to be so amazing that people that we think they are the ones they will just have been some small crowns. But certain People, you look at them say, hey, and heaven will reveal that these, they were despised, but they were a people that were crying day and night. This church, you'll be surprised. Some of you think, oh, it's certain. There are certain people that are making this church stand, and I might not even know, but there's a woman, some young man somewhere praying fervently for this church, and I'm thankful for that in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Say there's a priesthood. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. So in this season, we need a priesthood that strengthens you when you're about to give up. And it appears in your space and tells you, launch out again into the deep and let 
your nets for a catch. For those that are in business, may you encounter that priesthood or may you be that priesthood that will say, you know what, I've toiled all night. I've suffered all night. But there is a priesthood because I'm a king and a priest unto God. I'm going to lay down my nets. Brother in business, sister in business, let's put our nets down there. Business might have been tough, especially beginning this year. But by faith, put down your nets. By faith, be on the lookout. By faith, continue to believe God. By faith, continue to trust him who has called you. By faith, continue to believe that he's able in the mighty name of Jesus. Continue to believe that he's your rewarder. Amen? He's a reward of those that diligently seek him. But you need to believe that he is and he is the reward of those that diligently seek him. So there's a priesthood that can, once you, you, you are in that place maybe, you are weakened and you are discouraged and that priesthood says, do it again. And when you obey that priesthood, something supernatural takes place. So go out there and encourage the brethren I say go out there and encourage the brethren. Simon, after you've been strengthened, go and strengthen your brothers. Go strengthen your brothers by this priesthood in the name of Jesus. Some people are quitting because they are no encouragers. There's yet you to arise. May you arise today and be the encourager of brethren. Hallelujah. Be a Barnabas, son of encouragement. Glory be to God. You hear pastors resigning. Why should the pastor resign? And by the way, I, I, the statistic that every day there's so much figures to say every pastor, yes, because it's, this is not the easiest thing to do. It's, a, it's not a job. It's a calling. You're, so you see every day there's a pastor resigning right now as I'm speaking. Where is the Barnabas? To encourage the pastor. You see? There are people that are quitting business. They are called into business. There are people that are going through a divorce. Right now, where is Barnabas? Barnabas, where are you? Rise up in that priesthood. Son of encouragement. That you cause people to be blessed and to come into a blessing. Hallelujah. You are blessed to be a blessing. Say, I'm, I'm blessed to be a blessing. So, ladies and gentlemen, this priesthood that I'm talking to you about today, it is a priesthood of breakthrough. Say a priesthood of breakthrough. Very important because it is not a priesthood of condemnation. That's why the Bible says you have come or not you are, you are going to come. You have come to Mount Zion. You have come to Mount Zion. And it's not Mount Sinai. In Mount Sinai, you will be stoned to death. But the priesthood that you are under is the priesthood of Zion. In this Zion, you will not, it's not a priesthood of condemnation. It is a priesthood of breakthrough. Say so it's a priesthood of breakthrough. Where in Mount Zion, even if you come close, even your cattle if they are to come close to the mountain, they need to be stoned to death. But here it says you have come. You have come to Mount Zion. And in the company of innumerable angels. To the church of the firstborn of Christ. You know, all these, these are wonderful things that we have come into. Glory be to God. Say I have come to Mount Zion. That's why Romans 8, I believe, says therefore there is no condemnation to those that are in Christ, to those who are called according to his people. No condemnation. Why? Because we have come to Mount Zion. Say, I've come to Mount Zion. If there's there was condemnation in your life, receive forgiveness right now in the name of Jesus Christ. You are free in Jesus' mighty name, and you cannot be condemned because you are a child of God in Jesus' mighty name. Say, I've come to Mount Zion. Hallelujah. Hey, we've come to Mount Zion. Hallelujah. No, you have come to Mount Zion. Pastor E, you have come to Mount Zion. Billy, you have come to Mount Zion. Taunana, you have come to Mount Zion. The city of God, the new Jerusalem. Hey, Jerusalem, a place of peace. Salem, peace. Hallelujah. Don't be troubled anymore. I say don't be troubled anymore. You have come to Mount Zion. Hallelujah. So you want to know more about this priesthood? I'm asking, do you want to know more about this priesthood? 
Let's go to Luke 22, 31 to 32. Scripture says, And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, indeed Satan has asked for you that he may sift you as wheat. But, because I'm the priesthood in your place, but I have prayed for you. Thank God he has prayed for you. I told you that he lives to make intercession. You see here, the enemy, he says, you know what? I want this one, this sister, this marriage, this business, this ministry. I want to sift it. But Christ says, but I've prayed for you. Christ has already prayed for you in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. But I've prayed for you that your faith should not fail. And when you have returned to me, strengthen your brethren. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. So imagine with me a priesthood that tells you that Simon, you are going to deny me, but it's okay. You know, if, if me is your pastor, there are people that I know that this one is going to do this, this one is going to do that. You know, myself, without activating the priesthood, I'll say, I'll make sure that I'll never pray for this person. I'll make sure that I'll never bless this person. Myself, by nature. I think you too, you are looking at me like holy. You, say, you too, if you know, and somebody it is revealed to you that this one will be the one to betray you, will be the one to destroy you, you will do something about that. But this one, this priesthood that I'm talking to you about, he says, Simon, I know what you're about to do, but it's okay. I've already prayed for you. It will be okay. Some of you, you know your brother is going to mess you up, but you know, you, you, you will not fight him back. You will not strive with him you know that there is a priesthood in me. You say, Simon, I know it's okay. Go ahead, but it's okay. I say, you will be denied. There are people who are going to deceive. They do all sorts of things. But if you understand the priesthood in you, you don't need to fight a Simon and begin to say, Simon, why are you doing this, Simon? Or, or even to do some things. Some of you, we know you tip certain people and because you are wanting to build a clique and certain things, you like some favors. No, Jesus Christ didn't like it. He says, Peter, I know. Simon, I know. And because of the priesthood, it's okay. Don't worry. I'll take care of you. It's taken care of already. I decree and declare you are not going to fight your siblings again in the name of Jesus. No need. Say no need. So look at you. How you are fighting your siblings. How you are fighting your uncles. How you are fighting your cousins. But there is a priesthood in you. Say it stops today in the name of Jesus. Mm. He says, Simon, I know. And I understand that this is too big for you. But it's okay. Every pastor should understand that there are people who begs, bite them, who do certain things. But when they come for counseling, you give your best. When they call for help, you are there. But you understand. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. So, in other words, he's saying, I understand what you are going to go through. But I've already prayed in advance. I understand. Hallelujah. So, it is a priesthood that understands. Some of you, if you know that your own wife is going to misbehave. What will you do? <laughs> what will you do? Huh? Say, I'm the priest of the home. Yes, you have quoted the right word. But what will the priest would do in the midst of that? Hmm. Something to think about. By nature, we resent and distance ourselves from people who can betray us or deny us at a critical time. At a critical time. The enemy will make certain people leave you at a critical time. Amen? That's why at a critical time, they were sleeping on him. All along, they were okay. They were fine. But this was a critical time. They were sleeping. So Jesus demonstrated that his priesthood was not a priesthood of condemnation. It was the, a priesthood or the priesthood of breakthrough and forgiveness. Once you understand what we are talking to you about, it's easy to forgive. Let go. I say let go of that grudge. Let go of that issue. It is the priesthood of forgiveness. 
Let's practice it. To say, let's say it is the priesthood of forgiveness. Yes. That's why Jesus Christ went on the cross. It was to forgive us of our sins. Hallelujah. Some of you, even, you know, Elisha, Elisha being a good man, I like Elisha, but he was mocked at. He said, look, the bo- a bored dead man. And he says, I, you know what? I, I, I don't have time for kids. And he, he just cursed the young boy and was devoured by a lion. But it was, that was a priesthood. That was a priesthood. There are people that will laugh at me in ministry. I feel like also calling lions. But you know what? I, I remember the priesthood. May you also remember the priesthood. There are people that will do certain things for you. But you remember the priesthood. You say, you know what? I've, I've already prayed. It's okay. It's okay. When you are mature, when you have matured, God opens your eyes and you see, but you, you will not have strength to do anything. That's what we call humility. Humility means controlled strength. I can do it, but I'm not going to do it. Amen? I can say I'm leaving this marriage. I'm walking out of this house because I'm justified to do it. But because there is humility, I choose not to do it. That's humility. Say, I will choose not to do it. Hallelujah. Can we have priests around now? People who choose not to do it? Hallelujah. So, why was Satan taking Simon to court? Because this is a court. says, I want to sit to this one. Satan took advantage of Simon's pride. So he noticed that, you know what, Simon has got a big issue. His issue is pride. Is he not the one who was counseling Jesus? That, you know what, he rebuked, scripture says, he took Jesus aside and he rebuked him. And Satan was watching. And you see the ego of this apostle. And at the time, right time, he pounced on that. And he said, I want to sift you. So there are certain things that we do that will expose us to certain things. The enemy wants you to make a mistake so that he, he brings you into the court. Hallelujah. So and Satan himself understands the court of heaven. He is the accuser of brethren, according to Revelation 12, verse 10. That's who he is. And we see him playing the same role, bringing accusations to Job. Let me read it. Job 1, 6 to 10. Now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord. And Satan also came among them. Imagine the audacity. He also came. And the Lord said to Satan, from where do you come? And Satan answered the Lord and said, if, if, imagine the arrogance. He even went on to answer. And he answered and said, from going to and fro on the earth and from walking back and forth on it. So we actually know that he's always walking back and forth, looking for something. Looking for something to accuse us. It's going forth, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Then the Lord said to Satan, have you considered my servant Job that there is no one like him on earth blameless? Imagine God calling you blameless. Hey, I want to be called blameless by God. Don't you want to be called blameless by God? Hey, blameless, it simply means the inclination of the heart. Amen? If your heart, if it is to have a free, free fall all the time, it will fall at the side of God. That's what the meaning of blameless. Amen? So God says, this one, his heart is for me. And he's also upright. One who fears God and shuns evil. So Satan answered the Lord and said, Does Job fear God for nothing? Have you not made, there we go, have you not made a hedge around him, around his household? So apparently there are hedges around our households. He's opening our eyes here. He's, he's stupid. Satan is stupid. He's telling us that which I cannot see. He says, have you not? I don't know if Job was aware that there was a hedge. But Satan was much aware 
Let me repeat myself. I don't know whether Job was aware, but Satan was much aware that there was a hedge. Are you aware that there's a hedge? Are you aware that your ministry is not a hedge? Are you aware that your family there's a hedge? Are you aware that your marriage there's a hedge? Are you aware that your business there's a hedge? It says you have made a hedge around him and around his household and around all on every side. You have blessed the work of his hands. Yes. Some of you say, ah, maybe I don't know. Satan knows that the hands are blessed. <laughs> say from, to, from today. Thank you, Satan. You have revealed to me that my hands are blessed by the Lord. These hands are blessed. Hey, thank God for the blessed hands that we have. Hallelujah. You have blessed the work of his hands and his possessions have increased in the land. Hmm. Satan. So in the courts, Satan can challenge your motive. There we go. He didn't say Job did this. He says all that he is doing, paraphrasing the story, the things that Job does for you is because he sees these things. His motive is not right. So there are certain dimensions where it's not actually even what you are doing. God challenges and uh, the enemy takes your thoughts, your motives, things that are in your heart, and he presents it before God. And it can be a dangerous thing. Says he's doing it, but the motive, have you considered the motive? Then God says, you know what, let's go on and all this. What's in your heart right now? Why are you entertaining it? Because it can be used against you in the courts of heaven. Hallelujah. So Satan's main mission is to remove the hedge or spiritual covering around you. That's why you behave in a funny way when things are about to happen. You joke with things that you should not joke about. Once you joke about it, you see the onslaught of the enemy. Hey! He punishes you. He makes you behave funny. He makes you misbehave and he punishes you. That's the devil for you. He uses you like bubble gum. You are only good when you are still sweet. When, you are da- when he's done with you, he knows what to do. He discards you. Mm. So he, his main mission is to remove the hedge that God has placed in our lives. He fully knows that he cannot touch you because of the covering that you have as a child of God. Say, Satan cannot touch me. It's only you who can give him permission. He who diggeth a pit, I think it's Ecclesiastes 10, verse 8. He that diggeth a pit shall fall in it. He who splits wood shall be in danger therein. So it's you. Hallelujah. So the pits that some of us we are falling into, it's not that the enemy has dug a pit. That scripture says, it didn't say certain dug a pit. It says he who digs a pit shall fall in it. Hallelujah. So, Satan's main mission is to remove that hedge. May you not allow him to do that. Hallelujah. So, we see him in Job's life. We see him in Simon's life. Thank God for Jesus. Say, thank God for Jesus. That with all our mistakes, he's still defending us from the onslaughts of the enemy. I wish your eyes would be opened to see how busy he is trying to block that attacks, onslaughts of the enemy. But because we don't see, we think that there is nothing going on. But Jesus is standing as the high priest. And he is making that intercession. He lives to make intercession. You might not see a war going on in the realm of the spirit. But I want you to realize that the devil is after you. The devil is not your friend. He is your enemy. He's after your marriage. He's after your business. He's after your vision. And you need to know that. But you need also to know that God is for you. He's there to protect your business. He's there to protect your family. He's there to protect every dream that came from the Lord. Thank God for that. We bless God for that. That is there for us. Why can't you just appreciate that which he has done for you? Hallelujah. So, Satan's mission 
is to remove your priestly garments or your mantle. And I gave you a story last time that when Moses was stripped, or Moses himself, he first stripped Aaron's priestly garments, and immediately Aaron died. So that's why the enemy wants us stripped off of our garments. Hallelujah. But I declare that your garment will remain on you. I say your garment will remain on you. The one who calls you is faithful and he will do it. He will help you to make sure that you are not moved by anything. Hallelujah. Let me close with this. And I want you to extract something from the story of Paul. The priesthood that was upon this man was amazing. And some of you, I want you to come in it. So I want to read from Acts 27, 9 to 12, and 21 to 25, then 30 to 35 in that order. Scripture says, now when the time had spent, had been spent, and sailing was now dangerous because of the fast was already over, Paul advised them saying, men, I perceive that this voyage will end with disaster and much loss, not only of the cargo and ship, but also our lives. Nevertheless, the centurion, that's where also the learned miss it. Life is very spiritual. So, someone was not seeing into the spiritual realm. The Bible says, nevertheless, the centurion was more persuaded by the helmsman and the owner of the ship, the owner of the ship, than by the things spoken by Paul. Don't ignore certain voices because they are assigned to preserve you by God. And because the harbor was not suitable to winter in, the majority advised the majority. This is where we miss it, when we are always looking for the majority. The majority advised to set sail from there also, if by any means they could reach Phoenix, a harbor of Crete, opening toward the southwest and the northwest, and winter there. But after long abstinence from food, then Paul stood in the midst of them and said, Men, you should have listened to me and not have sailed from, Kit, uh, from Crete and incurred this disaster and loss. And now I urge you to take heart, for there will be no loss of life among you, but only the ship. For there stood by me this night, an angel of God, to whom I belong and to whom I serve, saying, do not be afraid, Paul. You must be brought before Caesar. And indeed, God has granted you, God has granted you, all those who sail with you. Therefore, take heart, men, for I believe God that it will be just as he told me. You need this priesthood to tell you that take heart. I've been in prayer and I believe God. He will do according to that which is revealed unto me. Take heart. Your lives are preserved. You need a priesthood that will arise in your household. When chaos wants to prevail, you say, the God that I serve has visited me in the night. And it will be well. We might not have all the answers that we need, but it will be well. It will be just as he told me. And as the sailors were seeking to escape from the ship, there are people that are ready to escape at a dangerous time. When they had let down their skiff into the sea, wanting to run away, under the pretense, pretending, if you are in pretense, you might go in a disaster. Under the pretense of putting out anchors 
from the pro. Paul said to the centurion and to the soldiers, unless these men stay in the ship, you cannot be saved. That's a priesthood. Unless they are to remain, unless they are to be obedient to the word of God, they cannot be saved. The seas are dangerous places. The waters are dangerous. And some people, they will boldly venture into waters and face destruction. It says, unless they remain here, they cannot be saved. Then the soldiers cut away the ropes of the skiff and let it fall off. And as day was about to dawn, Paul implored them. They implored them all to take food, saying, Today is the 14th day, and you have waited and continued without food and eaten nothing. Therefore, I urge you, take nourishment, for this is for your survival. Since not a hair will fall from the head of any of you. And when he had said these things, he took bread, gave thanks to God in the presence of them all. And when he had broken it, he began, they began to eat. That's the priesthood. When everyone is saying this is the end, this priesthood rises in the midst of hopelessness, in the midst of turmoil, says there is a God. There is Jesus. There is the Father who has sent me. But in this, yes, you might see me as a prisoner in this boat, but I've been sent here as a grace in this. Because he said, I've not just preserved you, but even I've given the men, the men that are traveling with you, that none of them will perish. There are certain men, they come to us in our company, not as merely friends. Yes, we might see as friends, but they are there to stabilize things, to cause the troubled waters to become still as they speak. That's why you need Jesus in your boat if you are to experience a storm. Today, I think we were reading or yesterday that it says, let us go to the other side. In other words, let us start something. Each time you start something, the enemy would want to come and challenge you and disturb it and break it and stop it. So Jesus says, let us go to the other side because there was a mission, a purpose to go into the other side. And the Bible says, a wind storm, not just wind, a wind storm arose because there was yet a legion, a man called legion to encounter a God, to encounter Jesus. And the enemy was not prepared to allow that encounter to take place. So he weaponized wind to work against the mission. So here, we've got also people that are going through stuff because of that which is ahead. It might be, it might be true to some of us. There's a wind happening. There's a storm going on. But Jesus is stepping in the boat. Jesus, the reason why, the all-powerful, is about to step into that situation and is going to silence every wind, every storm that was wanting to tear apart your children, tear apart your business, tear apart your ministry, tear apart even also some, your confidence. Jesus is stepping in because there is a priesthood. There is a priesthood. And this priesthood it's not a priesthood of condemnation. It's a priesthood of breakthrough. And I've started by showing you how this priesthood penetrated spaces that were almost impossible to enter. And this priesthood, they would step in there and begin to say, it will happen this way. 
So this is the priesthood that you and I are called into. And we can demonstrate his power, his authority. But we can come into situations like this and encourage everyone else that it's okay. You'll be okay. Thank you for joining us. We trust that you have been blessed. Stay connected and subscribe to our social media platforms. That is Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, and TikTok at Eagle Vision Church. For all those who wish to partner with us by giving, these are our official accounts as a ministry. For all those who wish to give from abroad, kindly find our multi-currency direct pay online link in the description. For those giving locally, that is within Zimbabwe, using EcoCash, our short code is star 151 star 2 star 5 star 29 3961 star amount hush. For either RTGS or USD bank transfers, we have FBC, EcoBank and Stanbic accounts. For more information about us, please visit our website at www.eaglevisionchurch.co.zw or email us on info at eaglevisionchurch.co.zw.